Namaskaram, Hariyom, and welcome once again. You're watching Mzansi's favorite Hindu magazine show, Sunday Sadhana, right here on SABC2. Yes, our Hindu communities are filled with festivals, some that have just passed, and Mahashivaratri later this week. In today's program, we catch up with the past Pongal observance at the Sri Imperumal Temple in Chatsworth. But first, we explore a rather interesting healing therapy through spiritual hypnosis with Banu Chetty. We sometimes find ourselves experiencing unexplainable emotions, be it fears or feelings of deja vu. Hinduism believes in the concept of reincarnation and therefore explains these feelings as imprints on the mind that have been created from actions in the past, even a past birth. Through the process of spiritual hypnosis, these feelings can be unlocked from the subconscious mind. And while it cannot alter the past, it helps one to understand and release these emotions. We learn more with alternate therapist, Banu Chetty. Hello. Hi. I'm Kamlin. I'm Panu. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Can we go this way? Sure. Life is a, a journey of the soul. Whenever we do something so-called bad, although there is no such thing as good and bad essentially, it's just a matter of perspective and our perception of it. Uh, but when a person is feeling uncomfortable with a decision that they've made in their lives, it shows up in the form of, you know, the body goes off balance, disease starts to set in and mental insecurity starts to happen. And when a per person reaches a point in their lives where they can't uh, manage with how they're feeling in their lives, then they seek this kind of therapy. There are many myths about hypnosis which need to be ironed out in a session. And one of them is, um, you know, the, um, the entertainment industry has really uh, brought a different perception of what hypnosis is all about. And uh, really there is a place for hypnosis in the you know, entertainment field. But when we're dealing with hypnotherapy, it's essentially helping the client to understand that we're going to delve into your subconscious, but we can't do that without your permission. And once we get started with the process, it's um, really about finding out and listening to the person initially. Because when a person comes here, they come with a heavy heart. They come with baggage, literally. And my job essentially is to listen first. And as I'm listening to them, I am able to gauge where we're going to go with the session and what aspects to start working on. So my role is really as a facilitator to ask questions to bring out what the reality of why they are here. People are searching for deeper meaning. They're searching for um, answers at the core and they want to make a, a bigger difference. They want to accelerate their own growth in life. During a hypnosis session, your conscious mind is out of the way and um, the subconscious sort of allows you to be in touch with those who have passed on. And that becomes a, quite a, a big area in which people find a lot of closure in as well. I found that when the need is the greatest, the spirit sort of makes themselves available in a huge way to be able to bring these answers to the client. And just the connection with them and getting these answers from them and sensing their presence has a lot to do with their healing process as well. Having to uh, connect with uh, spirits from, uh, you know, who have passed on is very much a part of the whole hypnosis uh, subject because reincarnation is one of the pillars of, uh, of hypnosis itself. Okay. So just allow yourself to focus on your stomach and what's happening inside the stomach. And remember, what we look at disappears. What we do is, we, when we ask questions to spiral down and to find out what the core issues are, we get to the point of understanding that this person is, has issues with themselves. And because of the lessons associated with those experiences, then the client goes through the motions of life until they get to this point where they, they can't understand why they're going through certain things, like depression, for example, and they don't want to be here anymore. So they would come in and we try and focus on where it is that they want to be because where it is that they want to be is essentially the lesson that they're supposed to be learning. And as we go through the process of finding out, you know, by looking at the different experiences from the past and sometimes we go into the past life, we understand that the choices that they have made in a previous life or even in this lifetime 
has the effect now of causing them so much of discomfort. But as they go through the understanding of every action has an equal and opposite reaction, then they find themselves wanting to accept themselves for who they are. Because that's essentially what we are all about. We are projecting ourselves onto the world and everything that happens in the world is just feedback that we get. Going deeper and deeper. Stepping onto step number two. You see a door next to you. You are one hand on the door is the origin of the guilt that you feel that you are holding on to. On the door is written the origin of the guilt. Allow the young man just to express himself fully and completely. We've been given tools of creation in which to experience life. And those tools of creation are our thoughts, our words, and our deeds. And we find that as we use these um, tools to be able to create the reality in our lives, that we discover how much of power we have within ourselves. And so that whole journey of life is about using what we have to create grander versions of ourselves. Coming up early in the year, Pongal, the festival of Thanksgiving, is a grand celebration in India. When our forebears arrived in South Africa, they maintained this tradition but had to tweak it a bit to suit South African conditions. Sunday Sadhana joined the Sri Imperumal Temple in Chatsworth where they recently tried to revive some age-old traditions as practiced in our spiritual motherland. Pongal is actually a harvest festival uh, but you know, it's very apt in the, it's in the beginning of the English in English calendar, in as much as it, it might be a harvest festival, as is, as is Magara Sankranti, where people give off the old, you know, we'd like for people in the new year to, as they take resolutions, etc. It's, it's sort of a rebirth, reawakening, and, and to run with that kind of uh, philosophy. In India, where we have large numbers where they can afford to have four days of celebrations. So in South Africa, what they have done is they brought all those four days into one. Bogi is something that we have to do in our homes, right, to get rid of the unwanted stuff. What they do normally in India is they take all the stuffs in the middle of the street and all the people that are living in the street, they bring all the unwanted stuff and they burn it, right? But here what we do in South Africa, we encourage people to take all unwanted stuff and donate it to the hospice, donate it to the old age home. It's um, white rice and urut dal that I soak together and I ground to a paste and it's left to ferment and then it's steamed. There's no oil in it, it's only rice and urut dal and salt and it's steamed so there's no other cooking, no frying or very healthy. It's sambar, which is traditionally eaten with idli, and that's a doll um, that is boiled and then braised with a sambar masala. The entire uh, uh, concept of, of Pongal is actually a Thanksgiving, and uh, the boiling, uh, I would imagine, would be a, a showing of abundance. You know, in that, uh, in that, in that whatever was provided for this year has been adequate and sufficient. How the stream is coming up. That time we say, Pongal, oh Pongal, everything must raise. All the bad things are accumulating in our uh, bodies and our minds and so on. So the symbolism of the rice overflowing is we too need to remove all those, unlike uh, like a volcanic eruption, take away all those things again so that we can build a new foundation. The animals 
play an integral part in in the entire human existence. We pay a reverence in that, uh, particularly the, the cattle, in that they assist in terms of providing us with sustenance, assistance in, in terms of, of milling and, 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 and uh, plowing and all of that. But within the cow dwells over 30,000 uh, deities within the, within the cow, so he will pay reverence to all of them. Uh, and, and we will pay homage to the, to the cow. Hinduism believes in the divine dwelling in, in everything, so uh, that is the reason why we pay reference to them. That means the, the day one from today, the way is clear for you. Everybody's way is clear to go progressively. In essence, it's the cleansing of one's within oneself and the removal of all of one's impurities and to start off afresh with new beginnings. The vibrancy of our faith, one festival just passed and another upon us, with Mahashivaratri this week providing us with one of the most opportune times to still the mind and connect with divinity. Do make the most of this week, and until next time, keep up the sadhana. Om Namah Shivaya.